Guys, it's the 80s. It's 10-year-old news. What's the story? But Jerry, just let him finish. All right, look. So one of the DEA's most wanted, not only not in jail for eternity, but apparently on the government payroll, admitting in open court that he brought in thousands of kilos of cocaine to the U.S. every day for them. For who? The U.S. government, or with them, or at least while they were looking the other way. Jesus. This is the biggest story the Mercs ever had. That's what worries me. A lot of blind spots, you know? With we don't know Washington. We don't do international. We do now. There's been a lot of movies like this recently, such as like maybe The Insider and Good Night, Good Luck, where mm -hmm. you know, people fight to tell the truth and yet they pay a, a dire consequence. Sure. This, this, this story, though, feels even more tragic because this guy essentially paid with his life to get this story. Sure. And um, I was curious, I mean, we, we only know so much about this character, but playing a real life character always has its challenges. But sure. But since people don't know him quite as much as they will after you see this movie, would, did that make your job easier? No, no, because it's because people can still look up a person and be like, oh wait, I mean, look, you can only look, try to look like somebody so much. But the important thing to me is to grab the essence of who he was. That's my job, just like it is for a journalist to do X, Y, Z, or your job to do what. My job is to make this as truthful as I can be. So uh, the, the benefits of having a real life character is that there's usually a little bit of things out there or a family that can give me videos or something I can grab onto. There's mm -hmm. stuff he's written, I can grab onto things. I don't have to make it up in my head. Mm -hmm. The limitations to that is that there are those things that, oh wait, he would never do that. And, he would never wear assless chaps when he walked into a, or you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like, it's like I feel like wearing assless chaps walking into the, <laughs> the paper today. <laughs> but you know what I mean, to, to be ridiculous uh, with my analogy, but yeah. there's, there are limitations. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would have been interesting. I might have taken this out of the moment for a second, but yeah. That's like, right. Oh, wow. I want to keep it light enough, you know, because the movie can be a little, you know. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a tragic story in yeah. many ways. And the thing that was also fascinating is that, you know, you see the competitions between other newspapers, and that was something I didn't expect. Yeah, to I didn't understand that that either until this movie. Like, you know, and I try to get a little bit more information on that, you know, just so it's not in the text and not uh, what my limited experience is with it. So I kind of pried around a little bit more on that. And, I, and just even within the, the one paper, let alone that, um, it's interesting to me. It's really interesting. It's, it's a little more corporate of a world than I personally would be okay with but yeah you know hence why i guess gary kind of sh ruffled feathers being a, kind of a rebel and in, in his the way he dressed even and yeah. everything kind of did how he told his his uh wrote and i don't know it's interesting to me what was like the most challenging aspect of playing this character getting it right or the attempt of of honoring uh someone's life work essentially and his family and just getting that right and the outcome of that, um, after that, doesn't really matter to me. As long as you know people are entertained and um, they learn something, then it's our job well done. But for me personally, it was like getting it right for, for Gary and for his family. Mm -hmm. And um, that, because that can only lead to maybe other things. I did have to ask you, some, some of my uh, readers wanted to know um, yes. if you could tell us anything about the next Avengers movie. Yeah, what can I tell you? It's called Age of Ultron, and uh, I'm in it, and everybody's up in that sucker. And uh, <laughs> uh, for, for any of those that were at Comic Con, they know as much as I know about the movie. Oh, okay. Um, I uh, the script kept changing. It was all yeah, so I really can't tell you too much about it. Except it's going to be amazing. It's going to be giant, mm -hmm. and uh, will not disappoint. How familiar were you with the the story about? Um Runner's character. I wasn't at yeah. all, and that was a, a big part of the draw for me because I couldn't believe that I wasn't, and I, I couldn't believe that it would, had really happened. <laughs> and I was googling it mm -hmm. and asking my husband about it, and uh, and I thought it was a really big story. I mean, as did he, and he <laughs> you know covered it and pretty much gave his life for it. Your character is very important to the story because she's really, in many ways, the lifeline and the conscience for Webb throughout this whole movie. Did you get to know? Um, the character Sue? it's based on? I did. Um, yeah, she did feel to me as well very much the lifeline, uh, well, Gary's lifeline, you know, and they'd met very young, and he, he'd sort of become and grown into a reporter during their marriage, and, you know, like any marriage, it wasn't perfect, and they, you know, stood by each other, and, and uh, this really took its toll, you know, and I think the thing, the biggest thing I was struck by in meeting her was just 
how very real this story was, that this, we were telling someone's story that when this postscript is up on the screen, their life continues. And, you know, like it felt, well, I did feel a big responsibility then to try to show her quiet strength and just how much love she had for him because you didn't want her just to seem like she was tacked on, you right. know, to the story because she was very much the center of his life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certain characters like this, sometimes they can seem extraneous, but her character is very important to this story. I mean, story. it's small yeah. and she's quiet, but it, mm -hmm. hopefully they know what he had at stake, which was losing them. Usually playing a real-life person is, has its challenges, but this person in particular, people don't know too much about before this movie probably. Did that make your job easier? Did that make it harder? Not, you know, neither, because Sue was very open and accessible to us, so anything mm -hmm. we needed to know, and you know, I, you know, I think uh, the, the production crew kind of interviewed her a lot too, so we had source material and stuff. So rather than going back to the script, back to the script, <laughs> and kind of sit, letting everything simmer with your imagination, it was more looking at the home movies and, and just trying to get an essence of who she was. I mean, the thing that kind of stuck me was that, you know, newspaper, other rival newspapers were really aiming to take Webb down. Which How was, was the shame. part, that, to me, that was one of the real heartbreakers of the movie? Yeah. I, I couldn't understand it, and I couldn't understand what was motivating it, and, and then you start to realize that a lot of them, especially the DC papers, like, cover the CIA, and then you, like, you're talking about all the special interests. You're like, wow, how do we get anything? How do we know that anything anyone tells us is true? Am I being followed? A solution will hear you be for the revolution. I thought my job was to tell the public the truth, the facts, pretty or not, and let the publishing of those facts make a difference in how people look at things, at themselves, and what they stand for. We'd never threaten your children, Mr. Webb. What'd you say? It's over. I'm not finished with it. I'm not finished. This is a true story. Some stories are just too true to tell. Where you be for the revolution.